Something that we haven't added yet that may or may not piss off Uncle Roger. Well, the ingredient won't, but the timing will. And that is minced garlic, like that. Today, we're gonna see how Sam the cooking guy makes his egg fried rice. Now, Sam doesn't have any professional culinary background, but he is a self-made restaurateur. And he has had his own cooking channel as well, not just YouTube. And that is pretty impressive. If you're new to the channel, my name is James. I've been cooking as a chef for many years in the United States and over here in Europe and I have plenty of other videos and recipes on my YouTube channel as well. And if you happen to enjoy any of my videos, then be sure to give them a like, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. Now, let's get started. So if you don't know, there's a YouTube creator that goes by the name of Uncle Roger, and he's come to huge fame, huge fame, uh, recently, because he has a penchant for criticizing the way people cook rice and rice related things online. Yeah, it is pretty amazing. Well, then again, that was a time when all of us were stuck in the houses, so we couldn't really leave. And it was a very good moment for Nigel, but a very, very good moment for him. One of my favorite lines is him saying, uh, if your rice is too wet, you f***ed up. If your rice is too dry, you f***ed up. But it's, a, it's his accent. And he, mm. pretty certain, he doesn't have as heavy as an accent in real life as he does in this. He's very funny. Now, just to clarify, if people think that Uncle Roger is actually his true identity, it's a character. It's Nigel's character that he created, and he's done a very good job with it. He's been very successful with it. So you've probably seen him in his videos when he says, Nephew Nigel, that's him in reality, not Uncle Roger. We thought that we would show you what we think is a perfect egg fried rice uh, we're throwing pork belly in does anybody notice that sam has a camera that is slowly going to the side just very slowly but it is moving on its own everybody should know how to make a perfect egg fried rice wouldn't you agree gentlemen mm. hell yes, yeah sir hell yes maybe we can teach jamie oliver something <laughs> yeah jamie oliver got really beat up by uncle roger as did a bbc uh, chef, TV chef in, in London or something. She yeah. rinsed her rice and well, look, we're gonna get to the rice part. Uncle Roger has been very critical of a lot of people, not just Jamie, but Jamie's the one that he's been, he's turned him into his arch enemy basically because there's never been a response from Jamie, sadly. But I think that if Jamie right now, if Jamie honestly would respond to him, that this would be one of the most watched videos. I think it would be an excellent PR move and I think Jamie should do it. The only thing Uncle Roger is not going to like is the fact that we're doing this on the Evo as opposed to a walk because if you don't use a walk, in his opinion, you've already fucked up. <laughs> but it's really just a big cast iron pan turned upside down, so we're going to be fine. Let's make the egg. This is true. This would already be a minus point for uh, Sam if Uncle Roger was reviewing this, but I have seen fried rice made on flat tops before. It's not something like you only have to make in a walk. You can use what you have at home to make it. Then again, not many people have flat tops at home to make egg fried rice. We'll start by cracking some eggs in our bowl. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go with three. I'm gonna make a decent amount. Uh-oh. Is it shell? Nope, it's not shell. And this is the reason why it's always a good idea to crack your eggs into a ramekin or another bowl or something separate and not directly into whatever you're making. Then again, a little eggshell is not going to hurt you, or it shouldn't at least. It may be a little extra crunchy, but um, they are difficult to get out sometimes. They can be very difficult. And because we're making an Asian thing today, I'll use the sticks. Perfect. So we'll start with a little oil right here. We'll spread this around. So I don't want my egg to stick. If Uncle Roger reviews this, I hope that's not olive oil. I don't think it is, but we'll see. Okay, and now we slowly add the egg. So I want this guy thin, right? I just spread him out, let him cook. We're doing nothing to him at this point. We don't need to season it. The rice will be seasoned enough. We don't need to add vegetables to it. We're gonna add vegetables to the whole thing. It's all gonna be great. And then we make mm. sure that it's not sticking. And when it's nice and cooked on one side, we'll flip him over, just like that. Roll them out, come right here, here we go. It seems like Sam is going to be making his eggs a little bit like uh, what Rachel Ray made in her pad thai. If you haven't seen that video guys, then you should definitely go check that out. It's on my channel uh, after this video. It's an interesting video. All right, let's take this kit off. 
We'll put them on the cutting board okay. to rest. Boom. Now the pork belly can go straight on. Lovely. Spread these guys out. And by the way, the oil that I used for the egg was avocado oil, not olive oil, which would be a waste of uh, a good expensive oil, absolutely not necessary. And one more thing that pisses off Uncle Roger. Yes, that would be another minus point with Uncle Roger. But Sam said that avocado oil is not as expensive as olive oil. It's been a while since I've been back home. I haven't seen the prices in the US. And again, depending on where you live, the prices will be a little different. But is avocado oil really that much cheaper than olive oil? I mean, seriously? That color, that brown that some of these are getting, that's where we're headed. The pork belly is gonna add some nice flavor to this, especially if you like pork. All right, with the pork belly now looking gorgeous, mm -hmm. we're gonna just slide it over a bit. I've turned the temperature around the outside down a bit. It'll keep it warm, but won't cook it too much. But in this pork belly fat, we'll add our onions. That. Hmm, no garlic yet. Sam may add a little bit later on. It is very easy, if you guys don't know, it is very easy to burn garlic, especially if you have a pan that is too hot. It will literally take less than 30 seconds to burn it. And again, depending on how thick you cut the garlic, especially if you mince it. While the onions start to soften, let's uh, deal with our cooked egg and make a quick sauce. So I'm just gonna do this. Just roll this guy right up. Just get rid of this steam water. And now, just cut these pieces. If anyone's wondering why Sam is using the spatula to actually cut the eggs, you can use the spatula to cut, especially if you have a spatula that has a pretty sharp edge to it. And then down the middles, just to make them a little bit smaller. And there's our egg. And now the sauce. The sauce starts in a little bowl, and it gets the following. We'll start with a little thick soy, because I love it. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but this should be like the Indonesian soy sauce. It should be sweet. So this may be a little sweeter. This is probably why Sam likes it, because it is um, more thick soy sauce is fermented a little longer, it's reduced, it has extra sugar in it. It makes it a little sweeter. Thin it up a bit with a tiny bit of regulation soy. What's the difference? The thickness. If you have a dish that you don't want it to be watery when you add the soy, you'd use thick soy. Splash of sesame oil. Mm -hmm. And by splash, I mean a little bit. That is very true. Sesame oil, a little bit, will go a very long way. It's a very strongly flavored oil. And some sriracha Ooh. and we mix and because it happens all so fast you want this sitting at the ready with the egg to go in at the last minute and it's almost time for that let's talk about the rice we need i love the sound of fresh rice but fresh rice is death to fried rice because it's sticky it's mushy and it won't give you what you want what you need is next day rice and that's what this is i made this rice yesterday i spread it out on a pan i put it in the fridge i let it cool and now you've got rice that the grains are pretty much individual grains. They're not all stuck together. Mm. So when we go to make this, <laughs> this is gonna give us perfect fried rice. That hot, fresh stuff that we love to eat is not. Got it? Now speaking professionally, some restaurants, depending on what restaurant you work at, some of them will make the rice the day of, put them onto big, flat sheet trays, and then stick them in the blast chiller. And the blast chiller is a machine, some of them that you can actually put a uh, trolley, a cart into, and it would chill the food very quickly. And it is one very useful tool in the kitchen. And if you don't have a blast chiller, then normally to cool the food down in the kitchens and the restaurants, we put the food into the walk-in. Now, what's a walk-in? The walk-in is the walk-in cooler. This is a fridge and it is a fridge, it's a walk-in that you can actually enter yourself. You can actually walk into it. 
because restaurants need a lot of space or a lot of things to keep cold so they don't go bad. And the great thing about walk-ins and walk-in freezers during the summer is when it's very hot in the kitchen and you're sweating, you go into the walk-in, you relax a little bit, cool down, and uh, you go back to work. But you do have to be careful when doing inventory, especially in the freezer during the summer because you can catch a cold pretty easily. This happened to me before. Right, so we're adding peas and carrots, look. I don't know that anybody knows what makes absolutely 100% traditional egg fried rice, except the guy that invented it. <laughs> and we don't know who that is. This would probably be another minus point for Uncle Roger. But you know what's surprising is that in a lot of Chinese restaurants, especially in the US, when you order some egg fried rice, you'll get this. You'll get egg fried rice with a little bit of egg, some peas and some carrots. That's what you'll typically get. Then again though, the further from the place of origin where that food is actually from, the more different it is or it can be. And this is especially true with paella. That's okay. We like the look that this gives it. This will look like restaurant fried rice pretty much when we're done. Dealing with peas on this is a little difficult. This is one downside to using a flat top. If your flat top has some like little walls on the side, if it's a square flat top, it's a little easier. But this one with the peas, nah, <laughs> they're gonna be rolling all over the place. These were just frozen peas and carrots that I defrosted. And I only need them to start getting hot, so we'll try one. Ow. And it is almost hot enough. So now let's bring in the pork belly. Mm -hmm. Something that we haven't added yet that may or may not piss off Uncle Roger. Well, the ingredient won't, but the timing will. And that is minced garlic, like that. And as always, we wait till it starts to get fragrant before we mix it in. <laughs> Sam is right about this. The timing is another minus point with uh, Uncle Roger. Garlic, especially minced garlic, can burn very easily and you don't want burnt garlic. That's the last thing that you want in your food. Mm. You know what's next, boys? No. The rice. Yeah. I can't believe Chance didn't know that. And in we go. But now we want it to fry, so spread it out. Let it all get the heat that it deserves. Break up any clumps. Even though this is cold yesterday rice, still gonna have a clump or two. I would have to say that if you're at home, it is easier to make this in a wok. It really is because you can toss the rice. It's easier to work the rice, I should say, and work all the ingredients. Because on a flat top, you continuously have to move everything with the spatulas. And now it's sauce time. And we mix. Ah, oh. mm. when the sauce hits the hot rice, the mm. smell is unbelievable. Whenever you're working with ingredients that are like super syrupy, they're super thick, they're sweet, like sweet soy, uh, you want to add them later because they can burn, especially if you don't move everything in the pan. This is probably one reason why Jamie added a little bit of water to his saute pan when he was making the egg fried rice because he added chili jam in and it could caramelize, it could burn easily because if it starts caramelizing, the next step after caramelization is burning. The color change, everything is going perfectly. Swimmingly, you might say. Mix it all in. Should be no white rice when you're done. It should all have this beautiful color to it. When working on the flat top, I prefer a longer spatula. They're a lot easier to use when having to move or manipulate the food instead of using these short little spatulas. And when this is mixed, then what happens? Anybody? We the eat. Egg. No, we add the egg. Ah, damn it, Chan. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready for the egg. Ready any time. Okay, and it goes like this. Beautiful. This, and then it gets mixed in. It is looking pretty good, especially for cooking on the flat top, it's looking good. So even though there's two types of soy in here, we're still gonna need a pinch of salt 
to really enhance all the flavors. If you want to make Uncle Roger happy, all you have to do is add a little bit of MSG. That's it. Now, boys, do you know what happens now? Now we eat. <laughs> now we eat. All right, here's my idea. Let's make this kind of fancy in our bowl. All right, now that we're all here, let me just do this. I think Uncle Roger would have been a lot happier than with uh, Jamie's egg fried rice. Take our little bowl, we'll put a plate right on top of it, and we'll turn the guy over. Mm -hmm. Push down, and then lift up, and hope that you're living right. And there's your little rice, looking all pretty and everything. A little sandcastle. The only thing it's missing, because as we all know, green onions belong mm -hmm. on top as a garnish, not inside the fried rice, Jamie Oliver. Right, <laughs> Jamie Oliver. So you got your basic pieces here. You got your carrot, you got your peas, you got your, your pork belly bites, the egg, mm -hmm. and just gorgeousness. Flavorful gorgeousness. Hey, right now before I take this bite, hit the subscribe button if you like us. Hit the like button if you like it. And I'm gonna add to that. If you did like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you did like it, then don't forget to give it a like as well. You'd like this. <laughs> Crispy little bites of pork belly. Don't be scared of pork belly. Mm. Just like fat bacon. Mm. A little bit of heat from the sriracha is really nice. I can't get this. Whether Uncle Roger would approve or not of this, you should make this. Mm. And who's your Uncle Roger to tell us you can't make this kind of fried <laughs> rice? Right? 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 Right. right. <laughs> All right, everybody. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm gonna stand here and eat this to death. <clears throat> there are so many different types of egg fried rice and there are so many different styles with different variations of ingredients. I'm sure that if Uncle Roger was seeing this, he could pick quite a few things to comment on and you know, be himself. But Sam, if you're watching, I'm gonna be Frank. And no, my name is not Frank, it's James. If anybody's watching, and doesn't understand in English, we have a saying that I'm going to be frank with you or I'm going to be frank. And that means that I'm going to be honest with you. Now, that doesn't mean that everyone that is named Frank is honest. So just keep that in mind. But in any case, I'll be very frank that it, you overall, you did a very good job. Um, there are a few little things that, you know, could, you could tweak. Like I said, maybe the carrots, the peas, some MSG and maybe a wok. But overall, it looks very tasty. And the next time I'm in San Diego, I would love to come over and check out one of your restaurants. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, then let me know down below. Be sure to give it a like if you did and a share as well so you don't miss out on any other content that is going to be coming out. Be sure to check out this next video coming up here and I will see you guys again very soon. Until next time, take care.